hi everyone hope you're all doing well welcome back to our channel this video will be the most detailed video that i have created for azure arc for servers because i'm going to cover each and every option that's available on the portal now if you're watching the series from the beginning in the last video we have discussed about onboarding of linux servers to azure arc Whereas in this video, I'm going to talk about complete portal walkthrough covering each and every option that's available on Azure portal. Then we'll talk about each and every parameter that can be customized, which is moreover related to the onboarding script itself. Then we'll talk about how to customize the view of Azure Arc console itself. And then we'll talk about how selecting a specific version of Azure resource API can provide you much more detailed information. We are also going to see how to add a default dashboards of Azure Arc, which are created through Azure Resource Graph to our console or let's say to our default dashboards. Okay, now this is something which is very important because it is available out of the box. And apart from writing custom queries, there are certain dashboards which are already created for you. So it makes things a lot more simpler when you can see the data in the form of charts or graphs. And lastly, we'll talk about each and every role and permission which is required, a detailed view of the entire set of different features which are available that can be enabled for Azure Arc machines and then the architecture itself. I mean, which service on the client has what kind of purpose, okay? So this will be a complete demo video wherein I'm going to showcase everything on the subscription itself. So let me switch to my machine and then things will make a lot more sense. So what you see now is one of my browser where I have signed into portal.azure.com and as you can see, I'm getting this option of server hyphen azure arc now i have also added this option in my favorites so it is getting listed over here now let's say if you want to also do the same then you can just go ahead and search for arc click on this option that option will start getting listed and then you can just go ahead and add this particular option to your favorites altogether and then this option will start getting listed over here okay now this is something which i have explained in my first video that there are many services which can be onboarded to Azure Arc. Likewise, you can also onboard Kubernetes clusters apart from servers, SQL servers. You can also integrate Azure Arc with VMware services. But since for now we have only discussed about the option wherein we are manually onboarding machines to Azure Arc, specifically uh, the Windows Server or Linux machines. So I'm just going to restrain the entire content of this video for this particular console and everything that is related to servers okay now the first option that we get over here is a very familiar option because the moment i'll click on add i'm getting this option of creating scripts okay the next option here is manage view now what you see right now is the default view of azure arc console but if you want to customize it that option is also available so let's say if i click on this drop down you can see i'm getting this option of default and then i'm getting this option of browse all view for servers hyphen azure arc since for now there is only one particular view is available that's why i'm getting this option of default but with this being said if you want to create your own custom view you can do that now let's see how we can do that before we go ahead and create a custom view name, status, resource group, subscription, operating system, defender for cloud and monitoring agent. These six or sorry, these seven columns are part of default view that you see where defender for cloud means uh, that whether a specific set of machine is enabled for defender for cloud or not, or let's say whether this machine has been onboarded for defender for cloud or not and similarly the same concept applies for monitoring agent whether let's say log analytics agent or ama agent is installed on a specific server or not this is again something which is moreover related to deployment of extensions we'll cover that as well but let's for now check every possible option available on the portal okay 
now what i'll do is i'll go ahead and click on manage view again and then i'm going to click on edit column and here i'm going to click on this option of add a column now here i'm going to click on this drop down and i'm going to select let's say show me the resource type and also show me the location where this particular resource exists okay so the moment i'll click on save there will be a different view altogether okay and now if i want i can go ahead and save this view let's say as sample and then whenever i'm signing into this particular console i can just go ahead and select my sample view and all the respective details will be listed okay so let's say if i click on sample you can see the resource type and location id everything is getting listed over here okay now the next option is refresh i mean it's exceptionally simple then you can export all the data that you see over here in the form of csv report so as you can see now a csv has been downloaded and then the next option is open query now this is something which is very important because it is related to azure resource graph to be very precise and there is a dedicated playlist that i will be creating for azure resource for graph but for now just assume that whatever information was displayed on the console i mean in the previous console is the resultant of uh, the query that has been written over here so let's say if i click on run query i'll start getting the same results which we can see on the console but here in the form of a report or let's say results okay now this is again something uh, precisely which is very much related to azure resource for graph uh, but for this particular video just keep this in mind that whatever information you're seeing on this particular console can be queried through azure resource graph by using this particular query and with this being said it's not only about this particular console right anything that exists on mdc console can also be queried with uh, azure resource graph so we'll get into that also in a lot more detail now the next section is filter fairly simple you have subscriptions you have resource group you have location and then if you click on add filter you can again go ahead and select the same set of options which are available or which were available while we were trying to create a custom view altogether okay now this is the section wherein you can go ahead and group a resource okay now what you have to keep in mind that all the options that are getting listed over here or let's say the columns which are getting listed over here combined with some of the additional attributes as well which are related to let's say azure arc as an entity will get listed over here so that you can go ahead and group the machines so let's say if i select defender for cloud i can see that how many machines have no uh, value related to defender for cloud column then for how many machines it is enabled and then for how many machines it is not enabled now again this grouping is again fairly simple what it simply means that depending upon the column type that you have selected number of possible values and then based on each possible value there will be a specific group altogether so let's say if i click on location now everything has been uh, grouped in terms of location altogether the last one is list view and then you have this option which is summary view which is actually a very interesting option option and you should go ahead and check it now the question is why you should check it because this is something which is going to create a kind of graphical view for you and you will be able to get more insights or let's say you will be able to use this information in the form of reports altogether so let's say if i click on resource group you can see it is by default creating a graph for me which is let's say a bar chart to be very precise and then it is showing me that how many servers exist in a resource group named as azure arc hyphen servers and then you have arc underscore windows underscore server right and again this is something which is getting applied to every possible value that you see over here right so i can click on type and again i'm getting uh, one more view now this is more over related to the service type so let's say if i have a couple of kubernetes clusters so let's say if i have sql servers then i will be getting more information over here but since for now it is only servers i'm getting this option of servers hyphen azure arc then you have subscriptions i mean you can just go ahead and select uh you know or see for how many subscriptions uh, how many resources exist for now on your particular console then you have status you have data center different options which are available over here now the best part is that the moment i will click on operating system 
it is actually going to create a category based on even the version of the OS that exists, right? So this is where Azure Resource Graph comes into a play. I mean, it is super important for you to understand that every information that is displayed on this particular console under the hood, there are Azure Resource Graph queries, right? So if you want, you can club this information in a form of a custom query altogether, or if you want, you can use these results as it is. So then again, I have Defender for Cloud and Monitoring Agent. So these are all different set of options which are available that can help you create a kind of a graph out of the box altogether, okay? And then with this being said, let's say, now I want to know that what is the query behind this graph? So I can just click on this option of open query and you can see I'm getting this uh, query listed over here. So let's say if I click on run query, it is showing me the same result. And if I click on charts, I can just click on this option of bar chart. And now I'm getting the exact same chart uh, which was listed before in the previous console. Now the best part is from here itself, you can click on this option of pin to dashboard and you can just go ahead and create a new dashboard, let's say specifically for Azure Arc, right? I can just go ahead and type a dashboard name and I can say create and pin, okay? Now just wait for two, three minutes, come back to this particular section of dashboards or let's say, let me open a new uh, instance or let's say a new tab altogether and we'll directly go to the dashboard section and here I'm just going to select this option of CW underscore Azure Arc. And as you can see, that particular graph or that particular chart is now getting listed over here, okay? So this is everything which I'm going to cover when I'm going to talk about Azure Resource Graph. For now, you can just look at this particular console. It's a custom dashboard and everything has been created with the help of Azure Resource Graph queries itself, okay? So, this is what it is. So I'm going to close this particular section and I'm going to close this one as well. I'll again come back to Azure Arc. Yeah, so for now we have covered every option that's available on the console that can help you customize the view that you have for Azure Arc. Okay, now the next thing that I'm going to talk about, uh, which is moreover related to scripts itself, and that is this particular first option that we see over here, which is add. Now let's say the moment I'll click on add, I'm getting these two options. Now, uh, the best part is that even to get in a situation wherein you can see these set of options, or let's say you can click on add, you must be a resource group reader at least, okay? So in order to go ahead and create scripts, you should be at least a resource group reader for one particular resource group, okay? I'm not going to invest a lot of time in terms of making you understand how these two part works because this is something which has already been done. I'm just going to explain each and every setting that is required, okay? So if I talk about this with first console itself, it is showing me that in order to have Azure Arc, these are the services that you should access. So if I'll click on this first option, it will going to show me all the URLs which are required for Azure Arc to work. Now, some of them are required only for let's say Linux and some of them are required for Microsoft. But uh, with this being said, there has to be a method wherein you can check uh, that your machine is able to contact to these respective endpoints or not. And uh, for now, uh, this capability of verifying URLs is available with the Arc agent itself, okay? So let's say if I switch to one of my machine okay, which has been onboarded to Azure Arc already. So this is my machine. Let's say if I go to appers.cpl, you can see uh, my machine is onboarded to Azure Arc. And let's say if I go ahead and run PowerShell with admin, then I can just go ahead and run a command, which is azcma agent. And it is going to show me the list of every possible command that I can use to go ahead and check the status or let's say the value of a specific configuration that belongs to Azure Arc agent, okay? So let's say I just I can just go ahead and type uh, AZCMA agent. Let me clear the screen first and then things will make a lot more sense, okay? So let's say I can just type AZCMA agent space uh, check 
and then you can see it is showing the connectivity to all the URLs. Now, let's say if you want to get details uh, which are location specific, then you can just type hyphen hyphen location and then you can type uh, the location name. Let's say in my case, it is Central India. You can see it is going ahead and communicating uh, with the endpoints which are required. Now, practically speaking, uh, see, since this machine is already onboarded and it has all the details, so there is practically no difference that you see over here. But then depending upon the region that you have selected over here, this value might get changed. Now, the best part is this command, or let's say these set of commands, they are common for both the platform, be it Windows or be it Linux. So let's say this is my Linux machine. I can go ahead and type the same command. And this machine will also go ahead and check whether all the respective uh, endpoints uh, which are required are working or not. Okay, so let me run this command here with admin privileges so that you can get results. You can see everything is same. So every option or let's say every command which is related to AZCMA agent, this list will be same for both Linux as well as Windows. Okay, now let me come back to my browser. Yeah, now while onboarding the machine, you need local admin privilege. Now, what does this mean that the script when it is getting initiated on the machine, it requires admin privilege and it is very obvious. Now, let's say you have Azure Express route, then you can use uh, private link scopes uh, for, uh, for the connectivity so that your entire connection remains secure. Now, see, this doesn't mean that if you are doing URL whitelisting or if you are using using a proxy server, your connection is not secure. But it all depends upon your company requirement or your enterprise requirement that whether you want to use Express Route or not. Okay. Now, the next section is an Azure Active Directory service principle. Now, while you are creating the script or let's say before creating the script itself, onboarding a script, make sure you have created service principle. Otherwise, the console does not give you the option to create service principle on the fly. Now, what do I mean by this? That let's say if I click on next, you can see I'm getting an option to create a new resource group here itself. But if I'll scroll down here, even though I click on this, this will be restarted again from the scratch. And this is something which I've explained in my previous video as well, that make sure you have created service principle already before going ahead and uh, you know creating an onboarding script altogether okay so now uh, the first option here in creating a script itself let's talk about all the details which are related to script okay the first option here is resource group now here you can select any of the resource group now when azure arc was announced initially then there was a limit of 5000 servers per resource group okay so let me just show you that blog quickly see don't uh, get to this uh, section because it is not showing the exact or it is not showing the correct information there is a dedicated block for that let me just click on this one which has been announced lately and this is by ryan himself and you can see that on 3rd of feb uh, there was an announcement which was made that the limit which was moreover related to 5000 servers per resource group has been removed which basically means that now you can go ahead and onboard as many servers as you want in resource group but then with this being said be very cautious because the more information which you will have in resource group more time it will take for custom queries to go ahead and query certain set of information okay so just for this particular use case uh, let me tell you a scenario that you can apply in your environment provided your enterprise is highly scalable i mean there is no limit in terms of the resources that you have okay now basically what you can do is you can create a resource group uh, for a specific uh, let's say uh, solution type let's say you want to onboard 
servers from AWS, you can have a dedicated resource group for AWS. Similarly, if let's say you are onboarding resources from Google, you can have a dedicated resource group from Google and for on-prem resources as well. But even though you create different resource groups, all the machines will get listed in one centralized console itself. And this is something which I've already shown you by applying the grouping filter to the actual view itself, right? So if you'll go to Azure Arc, let's say here, irrespective of which resource group a machine exists, everything will get listed over here. As you can see, it is showing me two different resource group. And let's say if I do a group as well, you can see every resource group, uh, every resource group resource will get listed over here. It is that simple. So you can have a centralized console, even though you have multiple resource groups. Okay. So yeah, this was one of the aspect. Now the next option is region. Okay. Now here you can select whichever region you want, but then uh, be very sure that the region that you are selecting has the availability of all the other capabilities as well, which Azure Arc has to offer. So for example, let's say if your machine is sitting in a specific region and that region does not support by default uh, deployment of diagnostic extension. I'm just giving you a hypothetical example. Uh, this is not the actual use case. So make sure you do uh, do diligence first in terms of knowing that the region that I'm selecting is appropriate or not. Because at times, even though you want to adhere uh, to the compliance policies which your enterprise has, that means all my data should be in the same location where my enterprise as an organization exists, but then you end up having some limitations. So in that case, you may want to switch to a different region. Or let's say you may even want to move a machine from one specific region to another specific region altogether. Okay. Then here it is Windows and Linux for now. Now connectivity method, the first option which says public endpoint is the option that you have to select when you have whitelisted the URLs. And the other option is proxy servers when you want to define the address of proxy in the script itself, then you can select this particular option. But with this being said, uh, even though let's say you have installed Azure Arc agent on the machine, you still have the privilege to set proxy for both the platforms, be it Windows or let's say Linux. Okay. And then again, private endpoint is something that you have to select if you're going for express route. Okay. Now here you can go ahead and click on service principle and select the service principle itself. Now, there were certain comments or emails that I have received that I should tell you how to create client secret. The process is exceptionally simple. If you have not seen onboarding of Linux servers to Azure Arc, you can go ahead and see that video. I have covered this uh, option over there. Okay. So now I'm going to click on next. Again, this is something which is very, very simple. But then every customization that you are doing over here is somewhat helpful in terms of creating custom Azure resource graph queries. I'm emphasizing on this again and again, and trust me on this, the moment we'll start with Azure resource graph queries, you will see a very big difference in terms of querying data. Okay. Now I'm not going to make any change here and I'm going to click on next. Now I've also explained uh, this script in a lot more detail already in terms of what exactly is happening and uh, how this entire information is getting created. But, but then still uh, with this being said, I will explain you a very small difference that you will see if you will select the option of proxy server. So let me just click on next again. Yeah, so this console was not coming before, so I've completely refreshed the web page. The first option is deployment mode, which is basic script, again, covered in a lot more detail. Configuration manager is something that I will not be showing. Group policy is something that I've shown already. And in upcoming videos, I will also show you how to deploy an Ansible uh, or how to deploy a script through Ansible, okay? I have explained each and every component of this particular script in a lot more detail in my previous videos altogether. But the only change that I want to show you is again, more over related to to the option of selecting proxy. Okay. So let's say if I go here and if I select my location again, and then if I go ahead and click on proxy server and just 
uh, for this particular demo I'm just adding a sample proxy let's say sample.com I know this doesn't make sense but I just wanted to show you how the commands are getting changed now if I click on next next and you will see whatever information you are adding on the console gets added to the script itself this particular script that you will be deploying now there are obvious reasons that even while demonstrating this option of group policy I have not used this particular setup because the task which was getting uh, scheduled with this particular script was uh, targeted to run only once which means once you have uh, once that task is initiated it is not going to run again and then it might cause issues and this is something which I have clearly shown in my group policy video itself I'm giving you this choice I mean uh, it, it all depends upon you that if you want you can go ahead with this particular uh, setting as well but mine is slightly simple because I'm not going to install or I'm not going to download a package and then keeping it in a network share now one more issue with this particular approach and that is that assume that there are very frequent changes now which are getting related to Azure Arc agent then think about the process I mean you have to download this every time and then keep it in a network share now a very contradictory statement to what I have explained before or what I've explained right now is that Azure Arc agent is now offering you the capability of automatic updates okay so it is exceptionally simple that you can just go ahead and use basic script and then get it deployed and just enable or disable this script whenever required or whenever you are onboarding or offboarding any new machine okay so this was all about knowing everything which is related to the initial setup okay now let's talk about a very important component and that is service principle itself and uh, what kind of role is required for that particular service principle that you will be adding in your script okay now there are many roles which are associated to Azure Arc out of which Azure connected machine onboarding is the role that should exist or that should be assigned to the service principle that you will be on uh, that you will be incorporating in your script so make sure you have given this permission already and then go ahead and create script okay so this was all about knowing how the script creation works and every thing related to script altogether now let's talk about each and every option that's available for a resource which has been onboarded okay so this was my machine which I have onboarded with the help of group policy object in my last video altogether okay now if I talk about the first section which is overview this is listing down all the information which is more about related to machine and there are certain attributes to be very precise which are queried while machine is getting onboarded to Azure Arc now what do I mean by this that when you install Azure Arc client the script that gets initiated on the machine captures some instance metadata and that information is sent to Azure Arc service and from that information itself these set of columns or these set of values are populated okay now I can make you read this quickly so let's say Azure Arc for servers instance meta data okay now we'll get uh, in a lot more detail when we'll move to each and every component but with this being said you can see operating system name and version computer name then you have FQDN and then connected machine agent version this is the instance metadata which is captured from the machine itself which is getting onboarded and then all this different set of information gets listed over here okay now here you have this option of delete only delete the ob object when it goes in the state of being expired okay now this is something which is very important because there are three different status that can be associated with a machine altogether let me explain this in a deck and things will make a lot more sense so imagine you have a server an Azure Arc connected machine agent installed on this particular server now every five minutes 
this machine will report a heartbeat to Azure service which results in machine showing as connected on Azure portal. Okay, just for your reference, you can navigate to this particular location to check heartbeat logs, but practically speaking, no detailed information is available. So this can only help you while you're trying to troubleshoot a specific issue altogether. But this is something which is very generic. And in most of the cases, you would not need to go ahead and review these logs, but you can still, uh, you know, keep this location as a reference. Then let's say if the machine was not able to send heartbeat for around 15 to 30 minutes, then in this case, the machine state will get changed to disconnected. So on the portal where we were getting this option of status as connected, this will change to disconnected. And let's say if there is a machine which was not able to communicate with the service for let's say around 45 days. Okay then the state will get changed to expired. Okay, so machine will send a heartbeat for every five minutes, 15 to 30 minutes, the machine gets, uh, the status gets changed to disconnected if a heartbeat is not received. And if the machine is not communicating with the service for around 45 days, the status will be set to expired. Okay, now for every machine, for every resource that exists over here, apart from getting this information and apart from getting the default set of information which is available over here, you can actually go ahead and query, I mean, enormous information related to any particular resource that is getting listed over here, again, with the help of Azure resource graph queries, okay? Now, this part is again getting uh, deviated towards the API piece, but I wanted to explain it here because this might also help you while writing Azure resource graph queries. And that is something which is related to API versioning. And this is that particular section. So what you see now is some set of attributes, practically speaking, that belongs to this particular resource that can be accessed while you're trying to uh, query this particular resource with the help of Azure Resource Graph or API. But then if you choose any different version over here, the information that is getting listed over here will also get changed. Okay. So let's say this is the set of information that I'm getting, which is here. And let's say if I choose a different API version, let's say more latest one, then what you will see is either the addition or a removal of some set of properties which are related to this particular resource. So let's say if I go ahead and search for the latest one, let me just reduce the size a bit so that I can see the exact version. So let's say I'm going to select this option of uh, API version, which is the latest one. And if I click on this, now you can see this information has grown like anything. Okay. So again, if I'll now go ahead and see that this is the length of uh, the JSON, uh, which we can see, and it's almost twice. I mean, the set of information which I'm getting now just by changing the API versioning is almost twice to what we were getting before. Now think about it. This is something which is going to help you write more intelligent reporting or tools, depending upon whatever your whichever problem, precisely speaking, that you're trying to solve. Okay, so for every resource that is onboarded, the overview section is going to show you instance metadata information and every possible attribute or column that can be populated. Now in capabilities section, these are all additional capabilities that can be enabled for a machine that is onboarded to Azure Arc. So if you remember, this is something which I was covering in a lot more detail in my first video itself. The purpose of Azure Arc is not just unifying the view or not just onboarding all the machines to one single console. It has to be something beyond that. And that is actually uh, the fundamental purpose of using Azure Arc that you can bring your on-prem mach on machines or machines from different cloud providers, get them onboarded to Azure Arc and then use any of the service that exists in Azure uh, that can be applied to Azure Arc server as a resource, right? So let's say if you want, you can go ahead and capture additional log monitoring from the machine itself. That is with the help of log analytics deployment or AMA deployment, right? Similarly, you can go ahead and 
get the machine onboarded to MDC so that you can go ahead and continuously monitor what is happening on that particular machine altogether. So what you see right now is the recommendation that my MDC is highlighting for this particular resource type or for this particular resource. Okay. Similarly, you have policies. I mean, you can go ahead and create a policy that can go ahead and check the compliance state of a machine. Okay. And then you have change tracking. Now, this option is currently in preview and I don't think I will be showing this particular option. But for these particular options, uh, there will be videos which will be coming very soon. Okay. Now, the next section is recommendations. Again, your resource is following. I mean, that was just a generic mes uh, message that is coming. Depending upon the advisor and depending upon uh, the configuration that I have done for my Azure advisor. I'm getting some of the recommendations which I can go ahead and if I want I can fix it depending upon how this particular security control is defined for my subscription and then in the tutorial section you can go ahead and read about uh, Azure Arc from these two particular resources altogether. Now in activity log this is again which is very common and uh, no need to spend time on this because I hope each one of you already know the purpose of activity logs showing everything that's happening on a machine uh, either from the service or let's say from any respective owner. This is basically coating everything which is related to my subscription, applying a filter of resource group and a resource itself. Then here you can go ahead and uh, define RBAC roles uh, respected to respectively for this particular machine altogether. Then in the next section is going to show you the tags. If you remember, this was the tag which I was giving while I was creating the script altogether. Diagnose and solve problem are the initial set of uh, some use case scenarios that will get listed that can help you solve a specific problem altogether. Now it's taking some time uh, for me to show but now it's available here. Yeah, so you can see what exactly you want to troubleshoot. Are you willing to troubleshoot extensions or let's say any of the features which is related to Azure Arc, right? Then you have this option of connect wherein you can connect to a machine which you have onboarded and that exists in your on-prem environment either through SSH or let's say with, uh, in, in this case, a specific authentication type which is also related to Azure AD. I will be covering this in a lot more detail but this is just to show you the different set of capabilities which are available. Now the next one that you have is security again. It is the same option uh, wherein this recommendation is coming from Microsoft Defender for Cloud. This console can be used to deploy extensions. So let's say if you want to deploy a specific script altogether, or let's say if you want to deploy an AMA agent or log analytics agent, then you can use this particular console. I will be explaining this in a lot more detail altogether. In fact, I'll show you how you can deploy extension and how you can manage the automatic upgrade part of extensions as well. Then you have properties, basically a dump of everything that we were seeing uh, in the JSON view. A very limited set of options are shown here. But then when you will use Azure Resource Graph or when you will use API, you can practically query anything and everything that exists for this particular resource. Then you have log in terms of uh, you know uh, adding some restriction to this particular resource itself. And then in the operation section, you have policies. That means I can go ahead and create a policy. And I can say that go ahead and check whether endpoint protection uh, is installed on the machine or not. It will go ahead and check. If it is not installed, then it will show me non-compliant. Okay. Or let's say if it is installed, then it will show me compliant. It all depends upon the kind of policy that you are making. Then you have machine configuration section, wherein you can just go ahead and uh, define what should be the resultant configuration for your machine and on behalf of which certain compliance uh, check will be initiated and you will get result over here. Again, this is something which is powered by Azure policy itself and I will be showing you this in a lot more detail. Then you have auto manage, you have SQL server configuration, you can go ahead and use updates section as well to go ahead and check what is it, what exactly is happening on a machine itself. Now again, update management itself is a very big topic and I might be covering this in upcoming future. And then you have the section of inventory, which is going to show you the details. Once you have enabled 
uh, the log capturing from the machine itself again this is something which i will be showing you in upcoming videos here i'm just telling you the purpose of each and every option then you have change tracking insights logs uh, again uh, depending upon the log analytics agent uh, which has been deployed on the machine you can go ahead and see and query the data for this particular machine itself because by default when you will click on logs it will show you the scope selected as this particular machine itself then you have workbooks, you have automation task, resource, health, and a new support request. Okay, so these are all different set of options which are available. Just to summarize, the purpose of Azure Arc is not to just get the machine onboarded. The purpose of Azure Arc is to onboard the machine and use the other services which Azure has to offer. According to me, that's the fundamental business use case. But then with this being said, you can have, uh, you know, a use case wherein you just centrally want to manage and see uh, what is happening on a specific machine altogether. Or let's say you just want to have some custom reporting available. For that also, you can use Azure Arc. Okay. So for now, we have discussed about every option on this particular console, every option on script part, every option that's available for service principle everything that you need to know in terms of roles that are available for service principle itself now as we move on as we're going to cover these many different services just for your information you can actually go to any of your subscription and then click on this option of uh, account this uh, RBAC option and then you can just click on roles and here just go ahead and type arc and you'll get to see the list of, uh, practically speaking, every role that exists. Now, there is just one last thing, you know, which I wanted to explain in a lot more detail. And this is the snip that I have taken from Microsoft official documentation. And it shows the architecture of how exactly Azure Arc Agent works. So if I talk about the capabilities which Azure Arc as an agent has to offer, if you remember, I was showing how the instance metadata is actually queried and sent in the form of heartbeats. Then you have guest configuration, which is going to perform evaluation in terms of whether a specific control exists on a machine or not. I mean, evaluation of the policies itself. And then the last component of the agent is the extension manager, which is responsible, practically speaking, for deploying extensions on a machine. Okay. Now, then the next important aspect is depending upon the functionality type all these services to be very precise they speak to a specific service on the azure side as well right so if i talk about let's say guest configuration the second service of azure arc it is something that is speaking to guest configuration part on the azure side this was client and then this was azure now, if you also remember, in my first video itself, I was letting you know that there are three resource providers which are required. Now, I hope you will be able to relate that the second service, which is responsible for guest configuration on Azure Arc client, speaks to guest configuration resource provider because this was something which was registered before even start working, uh, working with Azure Arc. Right. Similarly, the extension manager, it communicates to log analytics agent because depending upon the extension that you have deployed, a specific workspace should be set up to capture that information. Now, if you remember, I have made a LinkedIn post in terms of understanding how the service principle part works, but unfortunately, I've not got any response yet. And that's moreover related uh, to Azure AD part and what exactly it was that whenever a machine is onboarded to azure arc i repeat this again whenever a machine is onboarded to azure arc a service principle for that particular machine is getting created okay now while the onboarding is happening okay while the machine is getting onboarded, uh, the service principle is getting used, the permissions are getting granted, all these things make sense. But this service principle, a kind of managed identity, uh, which is getting listed or created in Azure AD, should not get these roles assigned automatically. Okay, now it's 
a very i should say not a decent response which i have received and just give me a minute i'll show you that so this is the query that i have raised okay what microsoft in terms of knowing and honestly speaking you can just go ahead and read about this and there's this particular response is something that i cannot accept but still i'm trying to get uh, you know get more insight in terms of what exactly is happening so let's see uh, what is the response that we get the fundamental is very simple that even if a managed identity is getting created for a specific server that i'm onboarding so this is that particular uh, query that i've raised with microsoft and that was why roles are getting assigned to service principle of onboarded servers to azure arc and unfortunately i'm not getting an expected response so let's see what they have to say i will be sharing this uh, link in the description you can also go ahead and read about this but with this being said if you have uh, if you're following us on linkedin you'll get to know about these insights in a lot more uh, you know efficient way because i keep on posting information over there okay now there is one last article which i want you all to go ahead and read because uh, this is again something uh, which is going to give you a lot more insights in terms of what kind of folders are created what kind of service is required for a specific component to work and then what are the service accounts uh, how exactly it's happening on linux why a specific uh, url is required what exactly the script is doing how exactly the services are getting created on linux as a platform so if you go ahead and read about these things it will make a lot more sense okay so this was all about knowing how exactly each and every component related to Azure Arc for servers work. Now let's talk about a quick summary of what all we have covered in this video. So this video is one of the longest video that I have posted because I was covering a lot of information starting from portal walkthrough to a script customization uh, showing you different set of information that is available with different API versions, Azure resource graph queries, adding dashboards, permissions, the entire architecture of Azure Arc client itself. Now in the next video, I'm going to talk about how to deploy extensions to Azure Arc onboarded servers. Now if you think that this channel is helping you to learn anything new please feel free to subscribe and share this video with your technical community thank you so much thanks for your time